Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, welcome to another episode of Hey, Man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Uh, today, I am so excited for our guest. Um, honestly, one somebody I respect so much for so many reasons. You'll find out during this podcast, but please say hello to Karen Fairchild, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi. Karen. Now, I start these podcasts but just by kind of giving people their flowers. I want you to know one of the reasons. I think you are such in such a such a badass. I have so much respect for how um, that you know who you are, that you're not bending to other people. I, I, you know, I, what I, when I watch people like you, I understand there's a difference between being nice and kind. You're kind, but you're not going to let somebody, you're not going to over nice yourself where people are going to take advantage of you. Right. It's such a crazy thing for someone like me to learn that from you. Like I have the greatest conversations with you. I always love talking <laughs> to you and you are very kind, but you're never letting anyone overstep the boundaries that you set up for your life. I have so much respect for that, and especially a, to be a strong woman in country music from when you started to now, and to for you to never like to never give in to those people and how they want you to act. I have so much respect for that because when you're first starting out as a young woman, I'm sure people were like, "Hey, you should probably not be or do this or dress like." And you right. were just like, "Hey, this is this is me," and I have uh, so much respect for that for 25 years you've been thank yourself you. it's awesome to watch thank, thank you. you so much for being here and you know how much i love your husband oh i love you and i finally got to meet yeah this i know i was so excited tall, we finally got to handsome meet some fella right <laughs> he's so tall it's so crazy how that happened <laughs> i was telling her on the walk up we think two negatives made a positive and that's yeah, why i'm tall it, listen if you're half jewish half asian you're not supposed to be tall <laughs> no here's why it, it's so backwards half asian half jewish so that's two smalls made it tall but then also half asian half jewish he should be good at math he's not zero math you know what i mean <laughs> like none like like none i mean you would think we picked the two right. groups that the, are really I nailed mean, the math fantastic yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that should have worked out yeah uh, the only math i'm good at is i know how many grams are in an ounce hey okay. well, uh, um, cut that out <laughs> Fine. Sorry, Grandma, Grandpa. Yeah. Sorry you had to hear that. <laughs> so I was in my head. I thought I would. No, I like. Pop the, it up. I like the honesty. So I wanted. I the one thing I realized that I really did not know about you, or don't know about you, and we looked online. It's pretty well. I don't know a whole lot about your childhood. Can you tell us just kind of where you grew up, brothers, sisters? Like, what was the situation? Yeah, um, raised by very um, southern. Mom and dad, one mm -hmm. from my dad's from Oneida, Tennessee, which is East Tennessee, tiny little town. Um, my mom is from Geraldine, Alabama, tiny little town okay. on top of Sand Mountain. So, Fort Payne, Alabama, where Alabama's from, um, June Jam that they always did. Mom was born on the top of that, that mountain. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, um, very Southern parents. They fell in love, went to high school together. Um, Dad got a job as a J.C. Penney shoe salesman, and yeah. um, he's he's like a in the best way hustler, like just hard worker. They both are, um, and that took us to somehow him getting. And I, I I should know this, but him getting a job in like building parts, mm -hmm. like selling doors and stairwells and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, he did really well. They had my sister. And then he got the opportunity to grow in the company and move to outside of Chicago. So where outside of huge Chicago? change. Huge monster huge change. change. Where outside of I was born in Gary, Indiana. Oh boy, that Whoa. is a rough, yo, that's a rough joint. Yeah. Gary, Indiana. How long were you there? Uh 13 and a half years. Wow. So my brother and I were both born there. I have a younger brother. But we we lived in a little town called Griffith, which mm. was just bumps up next to Gary. Um, 
I want to say that the hospital, this is kind of like, I want to believe this, yeah. that it was the same hospital as Michael Jackson was born in. We're going to tell everybody it was. Yeah, let's say it. Okay. It <laughs> that's um, that's going to be the title of the, yeah. of the clip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we lived up there, um, and then we lived in a little town called Cherville. Did you ever play the um, Star Theater in Maryville, Indiana? I played a place in Gary. You did in Gary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. was, there, was there a little casino in Gary, oh. maybe? Like, like the Harris. horseshoe or no. the Harris or one of those two? I think there's a Harris out there. there there's a Harris it's somewhere, but like it's that. not in Gary, is it? Mm, I, don't I don't remember. I may, it might. What I remember thinking about Gary is we shouldn't spend too much time here. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, okay. I mean, think about this. Yeah. Okay, we yeah. lived, when we lived in Cherville. So my sister was old enough to drive us to school. So you have, there were three kids in your family. Mm -hmm. And okay. you're the middle child. I'm the middle. Okay, of course okay. I am. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I did like over my forehead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she would drive us to school and my dad would tell us, I mean, think about it. No cell phones. No GPS. No. No, no nothing. Yeah. I mean. We just went off on our merry way, but his one instruction was don't turn right on Reader Road. What happens when you turn right on Reader Road? I think it wasn't good, and it went <laughs> into, yeah. like, into the heart of Gary. Yeah, that's not Which good. Gary was at one time, I think, a thriving industrial mm -hmm. town. Right. But when all the steel mills shut down and stuff, um, it just turned. So, I mean, you say turned. That's nicely. I, <laughs> yeah, I think it was called the murder capital of the United States. Yeah. yeah. So that I would just remember turn. that we we crossed like thirteen <laughs> railroad tracks, and that's why I love the sounds of trains too. I love but trains. You do probably for different reasons though. Yeah. Why think, do you love trains? Because I might be on the spectrum, but that's beside the oh. point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, should I have, dude, like when I should see I trains, have you a conductor hat as a dude, kid. Dude, not gonna lie, whenever I see trains, I'm like, yeah, I what's know. up with that train? Like, really? I, I don't know why I love them. Like even <laughs> the train like that obsession. went by before we started. Yeah, there's oh, I, something that I just like in the distance of hearing it. That I guess it reminds me of home. Uh, home. home. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, you you didn't go right on Reader Road, mm -hmm. so um, and we were always like, oh god, what's happening? Were you over there? At, at, like out of the three, you grew up re religious. Oh yeah, and so out of the three of you, who was the was there a rebellious one? Um, I mean, for the fa definitely not, not, not my sister, not the firstborn. Right. My brother was for a brief period of time mm -hmm. in his life, and I think he still has that like rebellious attitude. Um, but it might be me, even though I'm a peacemaker in the family because I'm. You have to be. Yep. Middle. I'm middle in child. the middle. But I'm also um, stubborn and strong-willed. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think I went along through a lot of my life. I don't think I, I know I. And wanted to people please a lot. And then especially in regards to religion and faith. And then it like snapped for me of, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why am I chasing? What am I chasing? Yeah. Why yeah. am I chasing it? What does it mean to me? And I asked so many questions. Like I went to Sanford University, which is a Baptist mm -hmm. college in Alabama. And I know I'm skipping way ahead. No, 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 no. no. Okay, but yeah, I I would ask everyone, I would meet all these pastors and all these, you know, mm -hmm. divinity school people. And I'd be like, okay, so does does my faith change God's mind? Like my prayer, or I, or not, like have, the prayer of a righteous man avails yeah. much, is what the Bible said. Right. So, but does that mean that actually, if I pray hard enough, it wills God to do something? And what do they say? Oh, I would get different answers if you asked a Baptist pastor. He would say, "God's not a vending machine. Right. He does what he pleases." Right. And then if I asked a Pentecostal pastor. They would be like, of course. You know, it's prosperity theology. Right. Anyhow, I I dove in deep into those years of like really, really struggling. Cause I was like always thinking I was gonna bust hell wide open. Yeah. If I didn't do Because that's what the you right had been thing. Right. taught growing up. Well, Jimmy was taught that more. Yep. Um, Baptists believe once you believe, you believe. Yeah. You know, and right. you're like 
instantly into heaven and there's just a lot of there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. Can I ask you? Hold on, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Can I ask you? So, when you're growing up, and we're gonna we'll get back into your fans you as are a kid. like, wh- no, who no, no, is she and what is she talking about? No, this is amazing because I am so because I know you now, right? right? And would you consider yourself more spiritual now than you are religious? Yeah. Oh, for sure. It, but okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be asking this right. But is your I don't know what the other word to use, but is your faith, I guess, mm-hmm. is your belief, like, are you still as, is your belief in the spirituality as strong as your belief in God was growing up? Do you know what I'm asking? Like, has it just transferred? It's much different now. It's like my belief in God, whomever he or she is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I had said that yes. younger, would not have gone over well. Passed. No. I, I, I'm still, I'm still on that path of learning, Yeah, but I see God in many different ways and forms and, you know, Jimmy and I are on different journeys right now. Um, but both grew up very oh, religious, very, right? Very mm-hmm. religious. Yeah. So how do you both grow up with religious? You both have, um, moved towards spirituality, right? How, like, so then how do you take in Jimmy, how do you guys take what you learned as kids, who you are now and, and filter that into Elijah? Like, how have you decided to, to raise him as far as his spirituality? I, I like we my haven't. parents were Jewish. You haven't, he gets to decide. We haven't, we haven't, um, we you go to church shoved, every Sunday? No, okay. we have not shoved anything down his throat. Like, because we want him, he's, he's just now 14. Right. Mm. So I think just now, you can start to really understand without condemnation or worry whom God may be, yeah, right. you know? Um, and I would rather him figure that out on his own than think it's tied to politics or think it's tied sure. to some performance. Right. Like if he's good enough, he might get in yeah. to the club. I just yeah. don't, yeah. I don't want that for him. And do your parents or Jimmy's parents, does he know how you guys grew up? Do, does their ideology, do they ever talk to him about th- th- how their belief in God? Like, be- I'm so curious in my, because in my family, we're Jewish, but we've always been kind of, hot, you know, the high holidays and right. more culturally Jewish. Right. Right. But nothing was for him. You know, he went to preschool at a, a temple, but that was just, more because it was honestly safe and yeah. convenient, convenient, and right? And, uh, but then I also went to a private Catholic high school, right? For me, oh. I really wanted him to be like this, this: these people do this, these people do this. Completely up to you. Sounds like what you're doing, what you want to do. But just so you know, the Jews and the Catholics, even though you just went to different schools, they're pretty much the same people, right? Like mm-hmm. you couldn't tell the difference. So I'm definitely in a Jew school today, you know. <laughs> You know, it's not, you couldn't tell that. Well, well, they, yeah, when they, I mean, when I went and I had to do a, you could, ma- when I had to do a, but- well, <laughs> <laughs> not even that, when I had to, when I, when I had to go into the gymnasium for a mass for Ash Wednesday, that was definitely where I could tell and be like, we, we had mass once a month at that private Catholic high school. So I remember walking in and especially for Ash Wednesday, they were like, Hey, if you're not of this belief and you don't want the Ash cross on your head, walk up with your arms crossed. And and the, and the guy in there would just say, you know, uh, uh, you know, blessed, blessed be to you. Like, I hope you do well. And I remember walking up once and whoever was giving the ashes, they were like, you sure? And I was like, I don't, I don't believe in this. They're like, well, next time, maybe think about it. And I was like, nah, see, this is That's like- That's the guilt I'm looking for. I'm like, I'm like yo, there's well, the I, guilt. I there's was like, I know we're not doing this. Like, are you trying to force is there this on someone? Or like, if you don't take communion. I never did. All Same the, thing, yeah. All the, um, you know, uh, if your heart's not right with God, then you should either get it right or just pass on communion. Mm-hmm. But if you then if you pass on communion, then everybody's looking at you like, well, why'd you pass on <laughs> yeah. communion? Yeah, exactly. There's so much guilt wrapped up. That's what I don't want for Elijah. I would agree. More than anything. So, I do not want that. And I, I will say, like, my parents did an amazing job. Like, when 
we were told at church to bring records. We were going to burn them. Bring your vinyl from home. For and, real? Mm -hmm. How old were you when this was going on? Sixth grade or fifth grade. And so then. And I remember seeing my mom in the like uh, foyer of the church with her finger up to the pastor going, she is not bringing Elvis records tomorrow to burn. Like, she is not doing it. I love that. And so there She's was. She's bringing the Ann Murray records. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis is good. Ann Murray, <laughs> burn that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So, you know, and at the time they were burning like um, ACDC records yeah. or or whatever, you know. And and I grew up in outside of Chicago in the John Wayne Gacy years. Yeah. And um, the Loop and the Rock Station in Chicago yeah. and wow. ACDC and like all of that, which felt very much like um the devil yeah you right. know and well of course john wayne gacy but yeah um, not acdc did you <laughs> did you have to sneak music like that ever were your parents cool with you listening to acdc we mostly listened to um country and gospel music in our right. house and then my sister and i would listen to like the soft rock station so mm -hmm. it was like james taylor and yeah. stuff like that Steely right. Dan. yeah yeah on the way or you know i mean we Fleetwood Mac and the yeah, Eagles and like yeah. that was the bumping up against it wasn't that my parents were saying don't listen yeah it was it was just that they both loved country music their night out in Chicago would be a steak at the best steak restaurant and seeing Dolly and Kenny by the way it sounds like show. a great night. Sounds, a yeah. great night yeah sounds great that would be or like Barbara Mandrell or mm -hmm. somebody you know so the Mandrell sisters you don't know anything about no, that I no don't. I don't they had a TV you know, show didn't they Erlene didn't Louise they have a TV show Barbara yet? yeah yeah the Mandrell sisters I remember Barbara so so with amazing. your yeah growing up super religious and obviously mm -hmm. the church y'all went to were burning music they thought was some sort of like devilish or mm -hmm. satanic music and your mom obviously wagging a finger saying she's not bringing Elvis records to burn with your mom being super religious though was she still giving you that freedom to kind of explore anything else even though question. like even even though she may have had some sort of biased opinion towards the church that's tough I think um they wanted us to have this like upbringing of moral compass faith in God um but they both very strong willed people and my, my dad would be the guy that in the church softball league that would get thrown out of the game mm. sounds like also me. <laughs> that sounds like me that, like that sounds just i got i got i fouled out of the ymca yeah, game yeah. and they literally threw me out of the gym because yeah, i was so mad right and so yeah. I, that was my dad and my dad actually would be like leading um the hymns on sunday morning but then on monday night um was, when we were playing ball yelling out an umpire then it would be like you know the benches would clear. Clear. Oh, that. <laughs> and that I, I have a memory of him getting thrown out of one game and my mom being a nervous wreck <laughs> about him getting thrown out of games. And I, I remember watching the ump be like, uh, you laughing at me to my dad. Yeah. And my dad's funny. Like he was like talking to somebody and he goes, what? And they're like, you laughing at me? And he goes, maybe. <laughs> and then it, it was like, you're out of the game. Bench is cleared. I remember being behind this the amazing. chain link Look. fence and going, kill him! <laughs> like, get him, dad! Um, so, oh, of recent... Oh of that's, re called, that's called some family loyalty right now. That's ride or die from day one. Like, I, used I to love go, that. I loved playing ball. That is I amazing. played in like three, three softball leagues, like all through middle school. Were you um, an athlete? Yeah, I mean, I, I mainly, now, mainly I softball? could be wrong, but I'm assuming mainly. you are a Football. pretty competitive person. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I am also. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm not a fan of losing. No, I always. Uh, my dad always said like uh, losing. That's not fun. Yeah. By the way, I'm gonna make to a T-shirt that says that. Yeah, because it's not. Zero. And if I had to choose between losing and winning, yeah, clear choice. I don't, I don't I'm not sure why people are like it's okay. It, right, it's, it's never a, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's doable. But I'm but I'm it gonna happens, do my but, best not 
Yeah, yeah to make to sure lose. it doesn't happen. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I do. I mean, and but that's kind of how you attack life, though. Yeah, but like- I literally thought growing up that I could have been the shortstop of the Cubs, <laughs> and I, I, I really believed it. Like I had a great arm. I really thought like I could be the first chick we, on the Cubs. Are we gonna have I to play it. catch later? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I, I might have to see what's up. I might have to no, hit no, no, to see what the deal is. Are we gonna have to go out to the sounds field and maybe just see? We used get to you on clock each other in the forty, like growing up, and then what? then I I got mad at a guitar player on the bus one night, and I was like, we're gonna pull this bus over, and we're gonna we're gonna run. And I'm gonna beat your ass. This is we're gonna clock each other. Karen, you, uh, you ran the forty with this. Thing? Yo, this is like. No, I mean we this, used to growing up, like clock amazing. each other. And, but yeah, I had one smart ass guitar player that was like, "Hey, you ain't not like, oh, just talking down to me, like oh, you're, you're not, you're not fast." I was thinking I could fucking beat you. Like, did you beat him? Well, I had to calm down <laughs> and not pull the bus over to run the forty. Um, I love it. But that's the thing. He probably was talking all that smack and you were like, what's up then? Like, let's well, do it. I already it. knew. I, th- I mean, I'd, I'd seen him throw a football, so I knew. I knew. Oh. Like, <laughs> I knew, what I, w- I, knew yeah. what I was capable of. You were like, is that the arm you're supposed to be throwing with? Doesn't look like it. One, oh, of, those, no. one of those. But I, I kind of was like a little bit of like the boy in the family until my brother was born. So I loved, my sister loves sports too, but we, we played all the time. And then when my brother was born, my dad, we would play out in the yard all the time. He would be the all-time quarterback each side. Mm-hmm. And then we would run coverages on each other, you yeah. know, and um, and argue and fight. And it, it, like we played at my grandparents' house. Um, and I remember like catching the ball and the tree was the touchdown. Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to be tag ball. And my brother was just getting big enough to like really take me out. And he did. He took me out, like, and still says that I didn't score. And I to did this day? Yeah. to this day, yeah, I did score. But I got up and I was like, God, my leg. Well, my dad was like, Come here. He's like rubbing my leg out. He's like, it's just a little cramp. Take a run around the block. Well, we didn't know that my hamstring was torn. No. <laughs> and I mowed the lawn the next week At and what stuff. Age? And like, like, uh, I was probably like seventh grade or something oh. and fiercely competitive, but but that's that's what I'm talking about. Like he didn't have any idea that my hamstring was torn. Yeah. All I wanted to do was like score. When? So my my brother went on to be like six four, two fifteen. Big, big, yeah. big guy. Big guy. Big yeah. guy. Did he end but up playing anything sports wise? He did. I hope yeah. football. Yeah. He of- did. Um he played in college for a little bit. Um yeah. He's a great athlete. You grew up in the eighties, small town in Atlanta, though. Oh, that was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. What is that? Would you say is like the difference? Because our, our parents just let us walk out of the house and get on a bike and right. Mm-hmm. Can you think about that? By the way, I was just talking about it to a group of moms last you, night. At Elijah's age, uh, we were out of the house with no way for our parents to get in touch with us. No way for them to know when we were coming home or anything. Take off like on that. your ten speed and go no hel- back. No when helmet. It's dark. No helmet. Right when the street lights come on, mm-hmm. be at the house. And so, can first of all, two questions: Can you imagine doing that with Elijah? Right. But tell me something like growing up. Where the, and I, and I I'll give you an example for my brothers and I. And he thinks this is bananas. But we used to go. <laughs> we used to go it down. Is bananas. We used to go down in my basement. And so it was four boys and we would each grab three darts, turn out the lights and just throw them as hard as we could in whatever direction. But were you throwing? Darts. Metal Dart. darts. Oh God. Darts. Now look, Metal. we were a little insane. But my question is, growing up, oh my God. was there something that you guys did or one time or multiple times, just behavior that you, as children of the 80s, that you looking back, you're like, there's, there's no way. Or a story that you and your brothers and sister- Something like where you guys were like, I can't believe we got away with that. We used to throw, we used to throw snowballs at cars. It was a bad time, but we were, there was no, there was nobody because there was no helicopter parents. There was nobody hovering over us telling us what not to do. Right. Do you know what I mean? So we, we pushed the limits because there was nobody there to tell us not to. Yeah. But so your parents weren't like. Three older brothers. By the time I got oh. there, 
they were just like, hey, don't die. Don't let him die. Don't die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my dad was tired, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he was tired. He's he was tired like, of chasing I, everybody. Come on, man. Yeah. Just, you know. I, but we, but like, so one thing that he, like, we also had like heavy chores. We chopped wood. We stacked wood. We didn't have, my dad did not let us use, we didn't have any money growing up. So my dad did not let us use the, the electricity. So we had a wood stove that heated our house that we had to chop wood and go out and get it every morning. And it was, you also laid cement. This sounds like child labor. I'm not going to lie. But so was there anything, I mean, this sounds like OSHA would not approve <laughs> of what was happening. Can you think of anything as a kid that you were doing or allowed to do that you were just like, I would never let my kid. And, and this is not a judgment on your parents because it was just a different time. I don't judge oh, yeah, it was my just parents, a different right? Time. It was just a different time. Where were you guys pretty well behaved? We were pretty well behaved. Um, I mean, we would take off on our bikes and not come back for until it was dark. Right. You know, I, I used to do and that. And what though. did you do? Did you just. Oh, I would ride. There was little paths around back in the woods. Not many woods over there, but. And I would, we would just ride and like there were little like jumps and things and, um, or we'd play ball and, but yeah, I didn't. You weren't that I mischievous. Wasn't, no. That's good. I really wasn't. I just, I think the fear of hell and. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. like the fear for, of hell. Yeah. And, Did you sing in church? Uh-huh. Yeah. How old were you when you started singing in church? Like five or six. Were you always, were, were people like, oh, she can belt was that always you mm. at five or six no i mean i sang a lot my dad had a beautiful voice so did my sister but we sang at church and it, i had horrible stage fright and so Me you too. do i i used to have terrible you I used to have terrible stage fright yeah you saying you used to have stage fright by is the way if you all have never seen her on stage it's a <laughs> it's a fucking rock star <laughs> yeah yeah no i did i had a horrible stage fright like i would stay up all night long if he was like can we we sing this hymn as a trio tomorrow and i'd be like oh god you know no, but I loved singing, mm -hmm. and I would sing Steve Perry songs in my hairbrush. And oh know, yeah, <laughs> who did things. you pretend to be the most? I, I can tell you, for me, I was Steve Perry. Stop! Oh, dude, I would, <laughs> I would, I would journey it up in my. I mean, journey. Uh, I think everybody wanted to be journey when they were Steve Perry. God, on I, those I. So back in the day, if I wanted to, re so if I wanted to record a song, oh. I had to wait till it came on the radio. Yeah, and then and then hit, hit record like, yeah. with my cassette player, right? right? So I'd always miss either the first couple seconds mm -hmm. or the first couple seconds of the song. You'd hear the DJ go, "Coming up, Quiet Riot," and I'd be like, oh, "I want to record that." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did so, you make a mixtape for someone that way? Oh, oh mixtapes. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, also, I was listening to Super Tramp in the cars. Ooh. At my friend's Ooh, house. Oh, the cars! I was just um, telling him, how good are the cars? So good. And we would play pool downstairs, and that felt a little rebellious. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm listening to the cars. <laughs> and playing so pool fun. down in the basement. Yeah. Did you, when you were growing up, and I'm, I'm going to assume the answer to this, like when you got into high school, were you drinking at all? Or was oh, that something? Oh, no. I didn't even drink in college. Whoa. <laughs> you were there for all four years? Yeah, at a Baptist college. <laughs> oh, at a Baptist <laughs> college. Like, did nobody drink? None of like my crew did. Yeah. And I was deeply into almost like a cult. Religious wise? Mm hmm. Okay. How did you get, did that happen like freshman, like right away? Yeah. It was a campus group that um, was like very intense. And, mm -hmm. you know, I like intense things. <laughs> so, and I was, studying you know the bible and intense in what way intense like, and strict, like um rigid yeah and uh condemning and like judgment of mm. um what'd you do friday night josh oh really you know like that kind of stuff in bible study interesting and then you were if you were like climbing the hierarchy of this you would be leading other young men and so then you needed to be a role model so, um, wow. <laughs> okay. We, we got to stop, stop doing, doing that. that. Ah, uh, you guys. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, so do you not have anything like that in the like Jewish faith? faith? Um, like, where you we feel do. like so much responsibility that to pass it on. See, it just depends. 
there's different sex, I guess. Not S E X, but S E C T. Oh, right. Right, right, okay. right. Yeah. Um, reform, which is what I would consider myself to be. Mm-hmm. I would actually consider myself, and I think Judaism might be the only religion where you can say, I feel culturally Jewish, but not. I want to know how you feel about all that. Um, <sighs> Religion and politics and well, the way it affects you uh, well, from the way you grew up. Well, look, I, growing up growing up in this household with my mom and my dad, the, you know, obviously you were raised culturally Jewish. My mother was raised Christian. Catholic. Catholic, sorry. But getting into that household, like we were always exposed to both sides because – so we celebrated Christmas and we celebrated Hanukkah because both of my parents were just like, look, we're, we're just showing you what is – out there and what else, you know, it doesn't just have to be one thing here or one thing here. It wasn't giving me options, but it was just showing me all the possibilities of like kind of what the world has to hold. Mm -hmm. So, and then, but I really think after going to that private Catholic high school, I, I don't know if you ever heard about it because I never really got in trouble for it, but like, I definitely got called into the office for it. I got into a fight with my religion teacher my freshman year because she was, we were, it was like second week of school and I had never been in a school where they were, they were like, Hey, you have to take a religion class. Like it is a necessity. It will be part of your, you were doing the whole catechism thing, probably everything, everything in each book, like every year it was like deeper and deeper into the Bible, different, different books of the Bible. And I remember then she started reading the book of Genesis, the very first. And it was, you know, God created this. And on the seventh day he took a rest. And I kind of sat in the back and not to be rude, but I was like, yeah, okay. Like, I just kind of like giggled. And she goes, do you think something's funny? And I go, well, I mean, are we taking the Bible word for word literally, or are we just using it as more of kind of like a sim- symbolic thing? She goes, no, this is what happened. And I go, well, then I'm laughing at you because I, I'm not, I was like, I'm not trying to hit your religion. And look, and I've never been that way. Look, if you, if a religion is what drives you and it helps, keeps you go yeah. and you're not shoving it down people's throat. And Dude, the best thing about religion to me is it gives people a sense of belonging. A hundred percent. A community. And yes, this is what community. it was meant for to begin with. Absolutely. It was meant for community, not for separation. Right. Mm-hmm. This is, it's kind of been bastardized in that way. It's, it's been lost because it's a lot of people will say, well, if you don't believe in what I believe in, you're wrong. It's mm-hmm. either my way or the highway instead of being open to listening to others. Because look, if you look at all the different religions, y'all basically have the same beliefs. They're just in different words and in different books. For sure. But and the names are the same in a lot of the different di- religions. Oh. They just assigned different roles. A hundred percent. Right. And so, so those people yeah. existed. Yeah. And so yeah. for me, it was like, look, I, I have no problem. Y'all believe in what you believe in. And if that gets you through the day, it helps you do what you do. Awesome. The minute you're coming to me and saying, you're wrong, you have to believe this. I'm going to shove this down your throat. Is the minute I'm going to go and be like, look, if you're doing that, I'm going to do this. And this is what I'm going to tell you is you're wrong. You're wrong. I, I had a conversation again with another girl at LSU, my only semester in college. I was in the laundry room doing laundry at like 3 a.m. So you do know how to do laundry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Game so I, do. Yeah, I just chose when and when or not I wanted to do it. That's smart. <laughs> but so, and then this couple walked in and this girl had asked me, I had just this tattoo on my form I'd gotten the day before I left for college. And for me, it's, uh, it, it's just me knowing my worth and not letting anybody change who I am and who I am is who I am and that's what's best. And she read that and was like, oh, I love that. And she goes, do you believe in God? And I was like, no. Like, I don't. I go, I'm more of a spiritual person, if anything. And she said, well, you're not going to get into heaven. She said that, right? And I was like, hold on. Let's sit and have a conversation about this. I go, are you telling me that if when, whenever that day comes, if I'm at the gate of those, those pearly white gates and it's me and a serial killer and he believed in God and repented for his sins and I didn't, that I'm the one that's going to hell? And she said, well, yeah. And I go, great. That's not a religion I want to believe in. I was like that. I was like that belief right there, and what you just said to me contradicts your entire belief system. I don't want to be part of that. Right. I go. You believe what you want to believe, but like this, I'm not. I'm not the one. Like, don't. I'm not the one to come and try and press and be like, you're wrong. This way is right. Because when you explain it like that, you're wrong. And I know that's not what your belief is, Karen. So that that's what it was for me. It was always just kind of like, yeah, this weird part of many many of those kinds of conversations. The other day on his birthday. His birthday was the 17th. I, we were out to dinner and I, you know, here's one thing, a couple separate things. Like I, I, being able to work with him, I get to see him as a grown up, Right. And I don't get to, I don't have to guess what he's like as a human, mm-hmm. which is really cool. cool. My parents have to, have always had to guess. I, I, <laughs> I wasn't around them as a grown right. up, Right. Yeah. 
Well, we were at dinner with his his uh, Asian girlfriend, his black best friend, and his gay best friend. And I was like, this is how we raise this guy. My people. To just, do you know? That's the world I want to be that, in. Me, that's my is, people. Yeah. My people are my people. But I had never even thought of it. We've never discussed it. But I said to Beth, isn't it? First of all, I, it's not something that I have ever noticed before because we've never shown a light on it because it's not a big deal. But look at our son. Right. None of this matters. All that matters to him is that these people are good people. Yeah, it's always what's mattered. It's never mattered what do, you believed in, who you like. I, I you will know, say what you do. It's just as long as it, can I trust you? Can you? Can I? If I can, I can I trust you? Can I count on you? Do I know that you're not going to judge me for mistakes I make? Right? Do you understand me? Do you? Yeah. Like, are you willing to have adult conversations about me if we disagree? Cool. If so, let's let's rock and roll. But if yeah. not, it's going to be a quick. Hey, great to see you. Right. I'm out. How do you expose Elijah to that? Your son. How do you expose? Because you, I know you and Jimmy. You obviously are both very loving parents and very loving people. You, we, it is a pretty white area. How do you expose him to, because I know you want him to experience and be exposed to all different walks of life. How do you, how do you do that? How do you do that? Um, he has the, well, he has an incredible school with, um, a lot of, um, diverse beliefs there mm -hmm. um and i think being on the road as a kid growing up you meet all kinds of people you know and the crew guys all kind crew right. crew guys and girls all kinds of folks and beliefs and mm -hmm. things he shouldn't have been hearing on the radio and stuff <laughs> yeah. you know and so i think that really opened up his mind a lot to believing different things um we talk about that kind of stuff. I think it's actually getting harder now that he's a teenager. What do you mean? Because it kind of depends on what your algorithm feeds you. Right. Yeah. You know? 100%. So. How long has he been on the road with you guys? Since he was a baby. Always. So he's always. Always, yeah. Okay. okay. You know what's interesting, Karen? Because, and you have to do it more than I did. And I remember my dad saying this. He goes, oh, you, parenting now is so much harder. And I said, why? And he goes, well, when you used to come home after school at three o'clock, from three o'clock to 8 a.m. the next day, there was no outside influences. The only, the only voices you heard was mine and your mom's. We, we gave you the information or the direction or the morals that we thought were important for you to have. But your friends and whatever was happening in Europe or that was not it. somebody else's life was not influencing you. Now, there you have other people's, and, and you're watching lives that aren't real. You're watching lives. It's FOMO, right? That everyone's just trying to write. Mm -hmm. So how do you? And you can't edit, right? You can't no. edit like they might be on a YouTube video to look up um, something funny that a buddy sent, and the next one is taking them to the Moscow Symphony Hall or yeah. whatever that was. Just now. Just now happened. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And so then it's like, is that real? Is that what what's happening? And we've been taught to not trust anyone or mm -hmm. anything or any journalists or which I think is a dicey, dicey, dicey so I. deal. Yeah. Um I don't know. It's it I I it's a feel it's like a, I'm failing all the time with but, Elijah because it's horribly hard. Yeah. To help them navigate. And I, I did think about, at my grandparents' house, Grady and Bertie Jones, they were married for 70 years. What a great, Amazing. by the way. I, we're going to Grady and Bertie's house. I know. House. I'm coming I know. to that house. I'm going to that house. Absolutely. I know you are. Yeah, you I were. I love that. For sure. And if we would wake up in those back bedroom twin beds, my sister and I, <laughs> what did we do all day? I literally have thought about that. What did we do all day long? No we, internet, no nothing. We picked... Green beans with granddaddy, then broke them on the front porch, then canned them with my grandmother and my mom. We played softball in the yard, running bases till we wore the grass out. <laughs> we played football with my dad. We rode bikes. We went to the hardware store with my granddad. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes we just walked around the neighborhood. We did. I, yeah. I, I literally think around. about like even for myself now in the culture that we live in with the phone and working all, and being so accessible and like I need to answer this right mm -hmm. now, you know, all the time, all the time. I'm like, can my brain shut down enough to go yeah. back to my grandparents' house and it's hard not do anything? Yeah, it, I, it's funny. I, I think about like you know, you said that there's like a lot of my generation today and I will admit a lot of my generation is coddled with their parents, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of kids my age aren't, not aren't allowed to, but they're not being let to make their own mistakes by their parents. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like the parents are always trying to sniff it out. I think that might be because of most of the parents remember when they were kids and they go, how is it possible that there was nobody watching over me for X amount of hours a day? So yeah. some parents have taken that and going, that's not something I can do with my kid. And I don't want them to make or feel like they're alone or be like, have make those weird mistakes or find that sense of independence so young. So they sit over them and they helicopter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, but that's I tell part you of why I think it is. It's like, it's a weird. For me, like I always let them make mistakes. I mean, you let I, me go out on my own, though. I used to ride my bike to the park and be gone until I, the sun came up. I always let them make mistakes. I I, I think the, the we're raising a generation of people who are not going to be able to fix problems because we always I fix know. their problems. Ugh. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like So hard. One of the things that happened when we were left, and I say left alone, this is not a condemnation on, a condemnation on any of our parents because it's just the way, the way it was you just went out and hung out but because we were alone we solved problems we were out if you were out at two o'clock and you were hungry and you had like a dollar you went into i don't know we had a cumberland farms or a 7-eleven mm -hmm. and you got a payday and you split it with your friend and you sat next to your bike and you ate it do you know what i mean there were those you yeah. just were little people right that is not something that we allow if there are we don't, we're always solving things for them. And I, and, and I don't know what it was about the way our parents raised us. I think maybe it was also like now that we do have so much technology and, and do have so many news updates about what's happening in the world and the bad people. And you can look up online how many sexual predators are within a five mile I did radius that of you. Yeah, oh, yeah. I and don't do that because that would the freak. It would like I don't do it me. just because I know it would freak me out, dude. Like, as a grown up, it freaked you out as a parent. Do 100%. you remember why I did it? Yes, I do. We don't need to get into it. Wait, wait, I what? Mean, he I was may have been too friendly with some people in our driveway. Greg, um, I don't remember his name. He there was this Greg. dude with a backpack and like he had this dusty hair and an no, old jean didn't. jacket. And he wait, was somebody that you went to school with. No, no. some dude walking by stop. our house playing. Uh -huh. Jacob was in the front yard shooting mm -hmm. hoops, and the guy came by. No. And, and <laughs> See now, I mean, started shooting, and I go, "Dude, who's that?" He was like, "That was Greg." I'm like, "What?" And I and he was like, "Yeah." And then we started talking. Do you want to tell everybody what you told Greg? Told you, I told Greg that you were a stand-up comedian. That I was out of town every weekend, and it was just you and your mom at the house. <laughs> you and I was like, "What?" And then remember, we had That's a great. we had yeah. a dog. I did do that. We, <laughs> <laughs> we had a dog. I did do that. Our dog Rocky looked like he was gonna kill you, but he was like a pit. But he was staring at you because he was so scared. He was trying to make himself invisible. He was, uh, yeah, right. Good, good boy. So good boy. the <laughs> Greg and he started laughing. I go, was what was Rocky out here? He goes, yeah, but I told Greg Rocky would just run away from you if he ever walked into the house. And I was like. Dude, what? <laughs> and he had a backpack. Hey, in my doing? defense, nothing happened after. <laughs> so <laughs> Greg nice. might Greg might have been just been a nice guy, you know. Oh. So shout out Greg or not, whatever. Um, I mean, <laughs> a backpack and no way. Do you? He does Elijah nice have a lot of friends? Do you guys? Are you? Are are you? Is your house the house? Do people come hang out? Yeah, we. I mean, sometimes, but we. He's at the mall right now. And, and I remember doing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what he's doing, but he has Apple Pay, so he's not buying a payday. He's no, just he's like, not. no, he's times not buying have a changed. Pay. Yeah, yeah, times have changed. Um, and my friend, um, Becky Fluke, who's a photographer, um, she, I was like, can you come over and maybe run Elijah to the mall while I'm going to do this podcast deal? And she was like, yeah, I'll take him. And then she goes, so what are the instructions? Like, am I allowed to drop him? Where do I drop him? Does the friend come outside? I mean, that's the, yeah, that's yeah, where, yeah. you know, we're living. And I said, you can drop him like 
around Starbucks or something and he's good, you know, and, but I'm like, Elijah, you got Becky's number, you know, yeah, uh-huh. he texts me and he's inside meeting his buddy Tucker and I guess they're just going to roam around the mall. Yeah, that's what they do. But it's not the same, it's not the same roaming around the mall. I mean, they're, no. they're roaming around Louis Vuitton and Gucci yeah. and <laughs> at the Green Hills Mall. By, you know, the, way, not uh, like, by the way, Elijah yeah, and Tucker yeah, sounds like a great feet, sitcom. Elijah and, their Tucker. Elijah and Tucker. Yeah, but I, you know, I remember going to the mall after, because when I went the to gallery. school. Yeah, where I went to school, I went to Notre Dame uh, for a little bit of high school in the middle of uh, the Valley in California. And every Friday, even in middle school, every Friday after school, me and a group of friends, we would all, because we lived right the, the mall was, we could see it from our school entrance. So we would all walk to the mall together. We'd all buy Starbucks and then we'd all just go sit in the food court. I don't remember ever walking around a Louis Vuitton store. That's one thing. Well, there that was, was not definitely not. There was an not H- in there my wheelhouse. House. I didn't remember ever even knowing what no. any of that was. I didn't know until I was older. Yeah. Our, I don't feel like our generation was as interested in brands or mm-hmm. gear or any of that, I don't remember that, right? knowing what, my dad loved cars. Yeah. Uh-huh. But like, I didn't, I don't remember like thinking, oh, I want a Mercedes nah. or a BMW or like he would that- get like an Oldsmobile 88. Yeah. And it was gold. Those. Yeah. And it ran on diesel. Come and, on. And it would freeze up in the Chicago winters. Oh, the I diesel bet. fuel would freeze up. That's oh, amazing. whoa. And we'd get stalled on the way to church. Does <laughs> Elijah know how cool? His mom and dad are. Oh, he does not. No, we're not. Cool. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. going he to find out. But then I have a follow up for that. Like you said, mm-hmm. he's been on tour with you forever. Mm-hmm. And having me just like uh, just started being on tour and a little bit when I was younger. Is there anything that you think he benefits from being on tour with you guys? And you know what I'm saying? Like, do you think he oh, learns yeah, like what's he getting that other kids aren't getting? Well, that's interesting. From from being surrounded by adults Probably. all the time yeah and there's there's three other kids out there oh so, that's huge you know, for him. um penelope philip and becky's daughter mm-hmm. who yeah, is now yeah. 16 daisy is 16 um kimberly's daughter and then dolly just turned seven or eight. oh my god i can't even believe that so she's the one they all hover over yeah you know the older kids they watch over the seven-year-old yeah I but now that. they start to not come on the road as much because they're playing ball or dance or just yeah. all right, the right. things they're doing but when they were on the bus together can you imagine three families and three babies no it was pandemonium it doesn't sound crazy yeah, it doesn't sound like a quiet bus no it, it was crazy <laughs> And different sleep schedules, and they would fight. Like, you know, I know I have a vivid memory of being in catering and Elijah picking up somebody had given him like a transformer or something for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And he was mad at Daisy and he just took it and he went bam on her skull, just like crack. And and Uh, it was like silence. Oh my God. Did it make that noise too? Oh, yeah. And then then it was tears and like. Kimberly's scooping up Daisy and I'm scooping up Elijah, like, get over <laughs> yeah. here. And, get your butt over here. And then I remember in catering one time they they were fighting about something. I could see them over in the distance at the like the, you know, getting like chocolate milk or something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Elijah picked up the Hershey's bottle and was like, <laughs> like squirting all like all over Daisy and she was screaming and crying. <laughs> and you know, I think you know, they slammed each other's heads into the buses when they get mad, you know, like, bam. Yeah. Um, it's like the uh, WWE out yeah, there. Yeah, right? So it, it, you know, it was, but then they had the best time in the world. Right. They must have, so. They're like he, siblings. And he must I have bet. seen things, he's probably has given him a better sense of the world or more people from yeah. being out there. Yeah, because we traveled all over the world. Yeah. Right. And they would go with us and. You know, we if we were sound check and we were in Europe, they would be out looking at, you know, museums and I love we've been to every kid's museum in the world. In the world. Everywhere. Uh, yeah. now I, this is just a curiosity thing because I think every kid like every kid's parent has one of these. Whenever I was at the park or, you know, he was there, but he was a far he, like he was far away. My dad had this whistle that if I heard oh, man. from anywhere. Yep. I could turn, find him, and he would do this, and I'd be like, 
got to go. My friends would be like, we're in the middle of the game. I'd be like, if I don't leave now, I'm getting left here. So I'll see y'all later. Oh, I've, did you? I left my oldest son at the grocery store once. Yeah. Did you? He was did eight. You as a parent, do, do you? Uh, <laughs> I left my yeah. first husband on the side of the Yo, road. He, <laughs> he, he, what'd you say? She said she left her first husband on the side of the road. <laughs> in the rain. Put him out. Did we you? We were fighting. Yeah, I did not come back. I Wait, love, what? Yeah, I love that. You put him out. You were like driving? Nolensville Road. I love that. We were well, fighting, she's, she is not kidding, like, which I love. Then get out of the car. And he just got out and you were like. And he was he, he was like, yeah, okay. And I said, get out. And he did. And I, he opened the door and I, all the way to the apartment. I love I it. And love I did not come back. Love that. So, I did come back for my son. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's different. So do you have anything like that for like, a, it's like a whistle or a call, like something oh, that your kids know when they turn around and they go, it's time to go or shit's going down? I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like Elijah's like, mom. And I come running. Yeah. <laughs> And oh, I he's got the whistle. He's got the whistle. I go running in there and I'm like, what do you, he's an only kid, you know? Yeah, and I go, yeah. what do you want? He goes, lemonade. Like, <laughs> like you should, <laughs> like you should have known too. But I hear oh that, I, mom. That's you know, it's amazing. It's like this primal yell. Yeah, yeah, Can you yeah. think of something? But my dad that. could clear his throat. Okay, like, oh. like my brother was like a top 20 Atlanta basketball player in high school. We would be in tur tournaments. Of course, my mom's sister and I would be worried that he was going to get thrown out of these big games. Your dad. My dad, yeah. <laughs> um, and my brother would be on the free throw line and my dad would clear his throat and Kent would like and not look over. And that meant follow through. Like, oh, follow through. Yeah. Like, don't forget. Like, we worked on this. Don't follow forget through. you yeah. need this. Um, wow. Yeah. Interesting. So the clearing of the throat was a thing. That's but, amazing. Yeah. Is there anything that you took from your, that you recognize in yourself that you're oh. like, oh, dude, this is my mom or this is my dad. I, I called that. my dad a couple of weeks ago and my mom because I thought I was going to get thrown out of a basketball game <sighs> of Elijah's. And I just felt like literally like I was like almost in a blackout situation, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> and all of the parents are around me and everyone's staring. There was this one ref that I don't know what his problem was, but we had 43 fouls. 43? 43? 43. In one Elijah, game? Elijah had four fouls in the first quarter because he's, he's playing... Uh, center. The big man spot. Yeah, 43? You know, he's playing center. So I I start, I I literally told myself in the car, behave. <laughs> like, I think I took a Xanax in the car. Like I was like, I had like a half a glass of wine before I left the house. I was like, calm down. This is pregame. Pre-game. <laughs> yeah. This is pre-game. The fouls haven't even started yet. Yeah, we're pre-game. Oh, my so God. So this ref, he was just ridiculous. I Jimmy's sitting behind me with a couple of dads. I'm sitting by a couple of moms. And I see uh, one of our publishers walks in. His kid's playing for the other team. Mm -hmm. Like, hey. And thinking also, you really, you got to you gotta cool it. Yeah. Like, you know people. Yeah, and people building. know you. I don't think they do really, but um, probably. So <laughs> I don't know. It just was getting so like ramped up, and I can't stand injustice. Mm -hmm. If if they're playing bad and the fouls are fine, justified. they're justified, then whatever. Then I can be okay with that. Mm -hmm. But when it starts getting crazy, yep. And then he turned the ref turned to another parent on the front row of the opposite team, and he called a technical. Tech. And he looked over and he goes to this dad. He was like, um, like, you better, you better watch it or you're yeah. out of the game. And I turned to Jimmy and I said, I'm definitely out of this game. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to drop you a pen of where I end up. Like what Franklin Williamson County jail I'm in. I'll drop a pen. But I, I if that dad who is I'm not next. even speaking <laughs> out loud oh my God. is in trouble, I'm going. That I really am going. Crazy. And so, and the game was getting worse and worse. And I would find myself like just screaming, standing up and screaming, like, like 
you don't know what you're talking about. You know, like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> That's not a foul. You know, like I'm I'm losing it and I'm thinking, I'm I am my dad. Yeah. And the game is going on. Elijah's on the bench. He's pissed because he's 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 up four fouls now. Four fouls so in the, the first coach, quarter, I'd be pissed. Coach is taking him out because he needs him last yeah. you know, last quarter. Mm-hmm. Game's really like going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he puts him back in. And Elijah's playing really well, really aggressive. But I'm like, he's gonna, he's gonna foul out in a second. Jimmy, it's coming because this dude is calling this so tight. He actually went back to the parent that he gave the technical to. And the second time he went over to the Williamson County police and he goes, You see this dude right here? No. Well, in I'm not gonna say what I said. Yeah. <laughs> I will all imagine. But I was thinking, what a piece of wuss. Yeah. We like, got it. What a little wussy yeah. this dude is. So I was thinking, like, oh, come talk to me, like with your, the cop, the Williamson cops. I was thinking that, and then I turned to my friend Kristen. And I was like, he just went to the cops. Like, this is bad. And she goes, I'm going to hand you my baby if 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 you hand if you comes, my baby if he comes over because <laughs> maybe he won't throw you out of the game if you're holding if you're holding the baby. Good yeah. friend. Good friend, by the way, though. That's a good move. I like that. That's by a good the move. way, good idea, everybody. Just carry a baby with Just you. Just carry yeah. a baby. Yeah. So, yeah, he, Elijah, got the call over the back. It was a horrible call. And? I was l- losing it. And Jimmy was like, hey, babe. I mean, come on. Yeah. Calm down. Well, that's not what you say to you. I know. That doesn't help. No, I, I actually, I was like, okay. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And so we ended up winning and oh, it felt so good, you know. And yeah. we walk over, I walk over to the all the kids and the coaches and everybody's high-fiving and stuff. And um, I said to Ava and Elijah's little buddy, I go, can you hear me over there? <laughs> <laughs> and? He goes, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we oh. can all, we can all hear Loud you. Loud and clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We can all hear you. I was like, oh, God, oh, God. And then one of the coaches said something. I was like, I'm sorry. He goes, it's, it's okay. It's okay. That but, is amazing. Uh, so you really. told your dad what so he So I told my dad, and he was like, hey, babe, it's your birthright. Yeah, right. It's a rite of passage in this family. Get thrown out of a game. And I For the said, love of the game. I, I almost did, but I, I got I to gotta cool it. I always said I would never be this parent. And I... I don't want to be, but man. I know I'm with you. It was about the injustice. Mm-hmm. Sounds like Batman. Justice. And then I wanted to go talk to him. The, the, the little weasel ref yeah. was talking to the Williamson he County to officers. Podcast, by the way. And I told my friend Krista with the baby, I was like, I think I'm, I have, I'm really craving to walk over there. And she's like, nope. Yeah, nope, that's a good idea. Don't that's go. a good friend. No. <laughs> I, I, I would have been a bad friend. I would have been like, go light his ass up. I'm yeah. fucking here for it. I'll back yeah. you up. Let's go do it. I mean, it's not I like I'm going to get in a fist it. fight, but, no, but I just want to be like, you know. No, I, I get how that. How long you been reffing, dude? Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I, <laughs> I get that. That's hilarious. I get that. What's because, your, yeah. let me see your bio. Let's well, see how long you been doing Have you guys ever been on stage? And wanted to go at it with a fan. Yeah. Like that had been so rude yeah. that you were like, this crosses the line. I, see, here's the difference between like. Because it's similar feeling. Yes. And the difference also between like me on stage and you on stage, besides the fact that you're in front of 25,000 people, <laughs> is that is that there's a, you know, that's a little bit of a difference. But there's more separation between the fans and the musicians. You're so right there. Mm-hmm. So the, it, and nobody who comes to your show thinks, oh, I'm going to interact with Little Big Town. They, that's not, but people actually go to the comedy show like, I'm going to talk to the comic. And so there are people all the time who, and here's where, I've been doing this a long time. So, You're so peaceful too that I, can't, I, it's, I find it hard to uh, think that. <laughs> well, look. Does he but, get mad? Well, uh, look, here. Can, on stage, here's what I get mad at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can talk to me all you want. You know what I don't have any tolerance for? You talking to each other and fucking up other people's show. Yo, you can talk to me all you want. We're going to have a good time. And I'll give you a lot of leeway. I understand maybe you're drunk or you think this is how comedy shows are supposed to be. So I'm not going to be up here and be like, and 
It's and it's a live show. I, what I like, I like flowy things. I like yeah. The, you the, like the spontaneity. I love interaction. Yeah, right. And I love the fact that it's different every night. That right. keeps me interested, mm -hmm. especially as an artist, because I'm like, what is going to happen tonight? But when oh. you are fucking up the show for somebody else, yep. comedy leaves, and I'll talk to you straight up. Hey. I have zero tolerance for you thinking you're the only one in this fucking room. And I get dead serious. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I have zero tolerance for you thinking you're more important than the person sitting right next to you. Right. This is not where So I, you throw them out? Fuck yeah. Oh, and, no. And, I'll, but I'll tell you something more. You know what I like to do more than throw them out? My favorite. Just humiliate them. Until they get up and leave by themselves. He, I want you shame. to walk yourself. I will, oh, I walk will. yourself out. <laughs> uh, what did I, remember that? Where was that when we, I said to him? We were oh, in. Gonna, we were walk we, the video's online. We were in La Jolla, San Diego, oh, and right. I I wasn't even performing at the time. I, but I was, you know, we had decided to go with him, and because it was close to where we had lived, right. so we drove down there. It was a great drive, and I remember coming or getting into the green room, and I remember the opener and the feature coming back, and she was a nuisance, front row, front and fucking center all night. And when they came back, right before he walked out, he said, I'm about to walk this bitch like a dog. Let me tell you. And I was like, okay. And so Karen, I went and stood out and watched. She, so she had been so rude oh. to my openers. And uh. generally the openers are not, haven't been doing it long enough to where they know how to handle that, keep it friendly, and still do their act. Yeah. So you're humiliating somebody mm -hmm. who's, who's just trying to figure out how this all works. Right. Right. And as a young artist, you're confused anyways. You're, you don't know what you say, how you say, but to have this person in this way aggressively humiliate you and it makes the whole crowd quiet. It makes, I was not having it. Nah. And I was like, I'm going to walk her. She's going to be gone. And did she? <laughs> oh yeah. Yo, but the best part, of, the best <laughs> oh, part yeah. about it was she walked out by herself at like after her man she was with her man and so she walked out going double bird her i've never seen a grown man run out of he a comedy of club, club so fast he was so fucking embarrassed that he did not want his face to be seen he knew we were filming he walked out not walked ran out ducking under the camera like i can't i do i, I don't know seen. this woman i I like would, he was. He so was, she wasn't just talking to you. She just kept talking to everybody next when to her. I was on stage. She was fine because she came oh, to see me. Right, but she was disrespectful. She was to the disrespectful openers. to the I people who that. came up. It's like somebody who's not nice to the valet, but is nice to you. That's right. I don't want any piece of you. No, nope. you've already neither. showed me who you are. Right. Yeah. Right. The yeah. fact that you think it, you should be okay to me, but this person because they're they're not up to your set. I don't have any tolerance no. for people like that at all. I don't either. And I don't care if it's good for my job, good for my business, good for my show. You're not going to, I don't want you anywhere no. around me. And I'll figure out what happens after that. Yeah. I will tell you, <laughs> you walked over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was one of my favorite, one of my favorite. You know, there was another one. Online. There was another one. And even with that woman, I didn't ever really see you get mad like or like raise your voice or like get angry. There is only one account I can think of. We were at the Miami Improv oh. this past this past year, and there was a <laughs> yeah, there was a group of five or six between forty and fifty year old white women, and they walked in and they are sitting front 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 row, first table directly in front of you. And when I get on stage to open, one of the women is already on her phone and yeah. she's texting and she's doing something. And I remember, and there was a feature on after me, and I walk back and usually in green rooms there's a feed of what the room looks like. Yeah, and so when I go up. I, I do recon for him because I like to know where people are, where the annoying tables are, so I can prep him in case shit goes so then he could do his thing. And I walked back and looked at the feed. I go, yo, this table right here is going to be an issue. Ten minutes. She made me so mad. Ten minutes into his set. <laughs> it was like, it's the fastest I've ever seen it happen. This woman, not even the woman who was texting when I was up there. She was still texting when you went up there. But the woman behind her, answered a phone call in the middle of the set. And this dude, he was like, yo, no, there's no way you're going to pick up a phone call in the middle of a comedy show. And they were like, it's her babysitter. And he was like, I don't give a fuck. Here's what I like, said. I go, get up and walk out that's and it. take your that's phone it. call. That's, that's it. it. Be like, a phone person. Be like, yeah. You know, there was a woman in a front that's in, horrible. in Denver, right? So she's in the front row texting. And I don't tolerate that either. Just 
first three rows, I can see you. It's so- I know. Right? I can see you. Just move to the back. Don't bring your phone out. So I say to her, hey, do me a favor. Don't, no texting. If you want to text, no problem. But just step outside and text. And she goes, ah, my good friend is in the hospital. I was like, well, obviously not that good of a friend because you're at my comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember, oh, that. I remember that. How sick is she? Do you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was and I so was like, good, so Josh. either turn the phone off. She I got super you. upset when you said that. Would you? It was really funny. Did would she you? leave? Nah, she no, stayed, she but stayed. she stayed like this the entire yeah, show. Yeah, man. Was, would you? It was my favorite. Well, I will say. So last night I was watching him on stage. And it was such a proud moment. I, I because, you know, I, I've been doing this a minute. He's new. So I try to temper how much, I'm also his dad, how much advice or if I see something that doesn't work, I don't want to just fix it for him and be like, yeah. say this, this is going to work so much better. Say this. But I was watching him last night and there was something about where I was like, oh, I never really thought he would get into what I do. And he came back and he was writing in his comedy notebook and it was such a, uh, a proud, this is the best time of my life. I, I've said this recently. I oh, didn't right. know this was the dream until it happened, right? I didn't, you guys tour together, but I spend half my life by myself. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm experiencing all these things alone. Do you know, right. I've, I've, the last 15- I would always think that about, about you, like seeing you post and you- By like myself. I'm in a hotel room and- yeah. By my, Biloxi, Mississippi. It, yeah. In experiencing this stuff by myself. And I and I was like, oh, this is just the life of a comic. So he started touring with me. And I'm like, and I told Beth, I'm like, this doesn't matter if I sell another ticket. Like, this is the best. I was, what I thought was important really isn't. This is what's important. Sharing this. Right. With, right. Would you want Elijah to get into your business? Is it something that, you, I know you guys aren't pushing them one way or the other. But is it is it something that you've ever thought of uh, that he's ever talked to you about? Like, do, is is that something that you guys have discussed? I mean, not really. He he's very musical. Like he he's always he used to like get on drums when he was little, and the groove would happen immediately. And we would be like, wow, wow, he can he knows he kind of is very rhythmic. Yeah. Same thing on picking up a guitar. His left hand just he naturally feels like That's how awesome. it's supposed to go but he right now it's all sports yeah and then he's into like he's always been into rap music and so he's into like yeet yeah. and oh jesus i know and like the 21 new, savage oh that and, one i'm with um, the, the new era of rap is interesting. the new i know i know and we're trying to get him to listen to jay-z and yeah you know, yeah yeah stuff the classics um and he does some but I don't know. It, it's it's just interesting. He he doesn't really think we're very cool. That's so crazy. And it's he insane. he said something to me last night. It was just the two of us at the house, and we were watching like NCAA tournament or something. And something came on, and he was like, "Yeah, that's that's cool." And he said something about being a better musician than me, and I was like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah." Um, I said, well, <laughs> prove it, prove it, prove it. Prove yeah, it. yeah, that's, that's the right go. response. That's Absolutely. Good. And like, if he ever says like, y'all suck or yeah. something like that, um, I'll be like, really? Like, um, play me a song you've written. Mm. He'll go, oh, I, I could. And I love his confidence. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a feeling he could, you know, <laughs> but I'm like, well, you got to show me the discipline, like show me, Yeah. Um, which is, the, I'm sure what is so fun for him is like watching that 14 year old boy become this man huh. who is learning the discipline of it, it all. It's not just that, you know, it's watching, and enjoying it. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. It's oh, that's all we really want our kids to be is happy. I and, and find something you like. Yeah. I mean, the, mm -hmm. if you get to do what you love for a living, you're not really how working. Many, how many people get to do that? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Absolutely. I mean, right. Mm. It's so crazy. And now, and now me, don't leave me out of that. Guy. <laughs> but 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 this is but it's so it's so such a gift. 
Yeah. Like if you're a creator, if you're just like, and I really think every human is a creator. I agree. You know, that innate thing, whatever it is, I think if you're not using that God given, again, however you want to define God, creator, uh, that thing inside of you, whether it's like that you're a badass, you know, you sew on the weekends and you're phenomenal, that creative outlet is mm-hmm. so important in just humanity, period. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just couldn't do the nine to five clocking in and out. Nah, I cubicle. did that. I did a, my, the, my last like somewhat of a nine to five. Remember when I, was, when I was selling gym memberships when I was 19? Oh, I remember that. Gym memberships. At 19, I was, I was dude, selling that's... gym memberships at LA Platinum Fitness. Fitness. <laughs> working 65 hours a week at 19. Oh, my, had... And my only off day was Wednesday. You had to go in that steam room, dude. No, no, no. Uh... I mean, no, it's funny. When you I know, closed. men's I, steam room. I made, oh. I made the guy. <laughs> Karen, I, I can I smell it made, right yeah. now. <laughs> I always made the front desk people. I'm like, hey, I'm not cleaning that shit. You guys, By the way, this, I'd make them go the in 100%. The steam room at this LA Fitness was a hookup spot oh. for dudes. For gay men. Yeah. So if you, th- of this all locker ages. room, if you you just didn't go in the steam room. Nope. Unless you wanted to go in the steam room. Right, yeah. right. But you made the you made a mistake of going to that steam room and not knowing what it was one time. And you were like, oh, this is not my steam <laughs> room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this steam room is not for me. But so I do have a question oh, yeah. for you. Uh, I mean, obviously, like, you know, uh, having a kid with a parent who has a certain set of status, like obviously growing up, I had him. I went to school with like uh, little John's kid. Uh, yeah. Stallone's Stallone's, kid. Stallone's, Stallone's daughters. And I could I could always see like at school obviously them having or having more friends because people were like, Oh, their parents are famous and Oh, what can I do to Mm. be in their friend group? How can I get over to their houses Mm. on the weekend? Are you, are you ever worried now that he's getting into high school that something like that's going to happen? And if so, have y'all talked about that yet? Because you said he doesn't think you guys are cool, but obviously he has to know that his friends have to be like, yeah, yeah, they're knowing like his parents are Grammy winners. Like it's not some sort of small thing. Like, have you guys had that kind of conversation yet? Or is it anything that you're even worried about or anything like that? I don't know. I try not to, I try to think the best about people, people. Yeah. Yeah. People. And I don't know when he was gaming online, like a crazy person during COVID, I was getting worried then not really about them understanding like who we were, but more about protecting him and, all the crazy stories of gamers that weren't really like who they said they were, you know, mm-hmm. like those crazy stories. And, and then you hear the anger that happens in the room of oh, the, you the trash talking, yeah. you know, so that, I mean, we we're lucky in Nashville to have an incredible community of songwriters and artists. Right. And he's used to seeing people and like, even in the, drop off line at school of seeing like the way that you grew up yeah he's used to seeing so and so and so and so and got it um and they're just other people's parents yeah they're just other people's parents so he's already kind of he he's he finds or has maybe found friends already that are kind of in that same situation yeah as him yeah i will say dude one thing that that uh was i always thought was good about you being introduced to i famous people or whatever you want to call them early on is that you didn't see them as famous, which is why you've always judged people as people Yeah, because you've never separated them. Mm -hmm. You've never, they've always just been people. And so you've always judged people for who they are because you've never been like, Oh, I got this person belongs to a different status. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. I will say something else about last night that I wanted to mention to you as a parent, you know, you're right. What we want to see is, is you be happy, but man, watching your confidence just as a person grow over the last year, doing something that you were scared to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm so proud, man, because what it shows you that fears are made up in your head yeah Mm -hmm. most of them and you're usually scared of something you've never tried before right and then once you try it you're like oh that's not that and you're scared about something that you think is going to happen and it most of the time it never happens that's right yep that's right and and i what i hope is that this however wherever you end up but this shows you that that fear so many times is unwarranted Mm -hmm. in that in that it's it's your your body i think your instinct is just trying to protect you 
right? Yeah. You, your body's like, oh, d d don't get embarrassed. It's, don't get whatever, whatever. Mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. But, but to always push through that because what's on the other side is confidence and freedom. Do you and know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Freedom. Like you're going to fall flat on your face. A uh -huh. hundred times. I mean, we all do it. Yeah. And I think once you accept that, like, I'm going to have to risk some stuff and fail. But is it here? But what it's it, okay. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of how you recover from it in the moment, you know? Um, and I think, I mean, obviously your dad's a great example of like being able to turn a room on a dime <sighs> if it's not going the way he wants it to go, I'm you know? Uh, dude, Even though I've never really seen you in so a, crazy. in a awkward situation. It's about to happen two seconds from now. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pause. You, um, you, I will tell you, you know what I started to think about recently, especially in art, is the idea of failure I don't think about anymore. Even if you think about it, this is life in general, okay? If you think of art, which I do as a puzzle, right? You're, you're trying to find the right piece. So if I was putting a puzzle together, and I tried to put a piece down and it didn't fit, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's a failure. I would just be like, oh, there's another piece that fits into this puzzle. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not, this is not success and failure. This is trying. That one didn't work. It's good to know that this doesn't work. So I'm going to put it over here to see if it's going to work. Let me try another piece. And to me, that's what art is. Yeah, right. Do you, I think art by committee is what's difficult in our yes. business. Like mm -hmm. whether it's... Um, different for you than for me yeah i mean like we don't really have a lot of outside voices as far as any label or anything goes more of like opinions are art uh, like it, it is it's a point of view it's production production on a song is someone's point of view mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so when you're working and collaborating whose point of view you know are you chasing right and that I think can be how you handle those collaborative moments, whether you shut down the process because you're like, nope, yep. it's going to be my way or you're open, you know, and that's how song, those are how the, I think the joy of songwriting in a collaborative sense really works and you get something great is when you're open. I feel the same about parenting, you know, I really do because- yeah. Because and for Beth, the for me, mm -mm. okay. <laughs> so Beth obviously came in as when I was a single parent, right? And so for me, harder to allow the collaboration because you had already defined how you wanted it to go. This is my show, right? And I, as I allow allowed. Might, might not be the right word, but as I, as she and I spent more time together and I was like, you know what, a different point of view, a different upbringing, a different past, this is important yeah. for this parenting mm -hmm. process to work because I only know what I know and I don't know what I don't know. And when I really look, when I started to be like, yeah, there's, this is really two of us, I noticed a change. In him, he was not getting a female perspective mm -hmm. at all. My my daughter was not getting a female perspective. You should have seen how I used to do her hair and send her to school. The ponytails. <laughs> there are pictures where the oh one God. pony is one pony's like halfway down. And probably and one, then there was no YouTube to teach the no, dad how to do No, there was no YouTube for me. Tail. Yeah, right? no, no and, vacuum trick, yeah. like none of that. But my daughter oh my benefited so much. From having a woman there, and my and my oldest son too, too like Trevor, and so the collaboration, uh, and the in the same thing with the puzzle, the 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 worst or best or however you want to put it about parenting for me is I don't know if this decision is the right decision, right? I can only do what I think. Yeah, right. Do you feel like you guys have to agree on? We have when to he was younger. We have to agree when we get to him. Oh, see. Right. So to I'm us, bad about that. To us, unified I front. I don't. Unified front because I didn't want him thinking, well, I can just go to dad and get the answer. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
Yeah, right? and if That's... Jimmy were here, this would be a whole other <laughs> hour and a half of <laughs> but talking. You, but yeah, you know what I mean? That was the only reason no, why. No, I mean, everybody thinks that, and I'm sure they're right and I'm wrong. I just, I, I, I feel like Elijah's looking at two human beings with different opinions sometimes. Yeah. And that we can all figure it out versus like, I don't think there's a yeah. right and wrong. Well, I, I think it's, it, it depends. I'm sure he's going to be in therapy or he'll be on the show in, in a few years. <laughs> <Fact>. <laughs> he'll be like, oh yeah. my God. I First mean, of all, my mom's name was Karen. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> when she was talking about all that stuff on the be show. You if I got a Facebook message from him next week, listen, I have a couple counterpoints yeah. to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I, as a kid, he would. as a kid, I don't think it's bad necessarily That's to have two parents that have have two different and it's not it's not two different ways of doing things it's just two different perspectives that's yeah. all it really is so i think having two different perspectives from your parents as a kid is kind of nice and interesting because when you have a relationship with your kid and your spouse to be able to sit in a circle and listen to everyone's perspective but still form kind of a collaborative opinion yeah. I think is really important because it, it's like, look, if you're we're going back to politics, Democratic, Republican, when you watch TV, you're only getting one side of the story. You're either watching CNN or Fox News. Right. You're never getting what the other what the other is putting out. So to have those double opinions and to hear both sides from trusted sources like his parents, it probably helps him form more of an educated like uh like stance well, just on more certain well things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. More educated, more well-rounded because he has two sides to one story instead of just one. Yeah. So I, I think, it, honestly, it makes it more, I think, productive for him as a kid to be able to hear more than one thing. Are you the disciplinarian or the easy one? Are you the easy one? You're the easy one? <laughs> it's so weird. Like, when it comes to my child and dogs. Oh, what kind of dogs? dogs. Oh. I'm, I'm a softie. Yeah. And Jimmy is, he can't believe it. He's like, I can't believe in every other area <laughs> of our lives. You're so like, no, this is what we're doing. Yeah. And I'm not really like that, but, right. but I do have instincts about things and I, I'm quick to like, oh yeah, right. let's do this or whatever. But when it comes to Elijah, I mean, clearly if I'm answering mom, that yeah. is hilarious. And I have a diet yeah. coke. <laughs> what if Jimmy was like, and Karen, I need a lemonade. He'd be like, get oh, the fucking I lemonade. <laughs> I know. What am I doing? He's like, I need Chipotle. <laughs> okay. Here I am. Okay. Let me ask you one final question. And I'm ask, I ask everybody this because okay. I'm super curious. What's, if there was one thing, and, I, and I'll kind of, I'll give you a second to think about it. If there was one thing you hope that Elijah gets from you and one thing that you hope he doesn't. Now, I, I will tell you mm. there are, some people I've asked give the same answer. Like I, I, there was a MMA guy that I knew and I asked him, I go, what do you hope? He goes, I hope he, my son gets my drive, but I hope he doesn't get my drive. Right. Right. Whoa. Because I, I want him to be driven to do what he wants to do, but I ruined a lot of relationships just because mm. I was so caught up focused on tunnel vision that, he was like, I didn't think about the human part of life or I just right. wanted this. And so it's interesting. His was the same. Mine with my kids is also kind of the, the same. same. It's like the difference. What is yours? Mine is that I'm a really, I hope that they, he's nice to people. He's kind yeah. in the world. That he gives people grace. That you never, under, you know, I heard a story the other day about this guy who was an alcoholic, right? A stranger helped helped him through the alcoholism and, and basically got him in treatment and showed him mm -hmm. the way. This guy then gave birth to a daughter who has ended up doing great things. But he would have never ha had this daughter if this stranger hadn't showed grace to this dude. Right. Right? So you never know. You never know. Right? And so for me, I hope that he gets that and my all my kids get that. But I also, you know, the one thing that I, and I mentioned this earlier to you, my niceness has been taken advantage of a bunch, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I not anymore, but I, there were times where I would put other people ahead of me or if something was happening that I didn't like, I'd be like, well, I don't want to. Ruffle the feathers, right? yeah. And so that's not what I want them to ever experience. I, right. I want them in his sense of, in my kid's sense of self-worth 
and what they deserve. I want them to keep that. So you can be kind. Important to be kind, but nice is something else. Right. Hmm. Yeah. I think the thing my parents gave me was confidence with work, work ethic. So I never thought I was better than anybody, mm -hmm. but I thought I could do great things if I worked hard. And it took me a long time in life to trust my gut feeling, which, you know, when I was in college, I didn't think that gut feeling was God, you know, because you're mm. taught to, you're depraved, go against your original sin, your, and I don't believe that anymore. Right. I believe we're born in beauty and grace. And um, so I think when you get in tune with your gut, then you can have the confidence, the kindness, the cultivation of friends and relationships and art. But you got to you got to trust that inner thing that is like, mm, nah, that yep. doesn't feel good mm -hmm. or no, that that's I should be doing that. I should be doing more of that, you know, and it took me a long time to figure that out. So. It, it takes confidence in life as a human mm -hmm. to trust yourself and to stop thinking that other people know more than you. Right. And especially as a woman, like, yeah, you just think. Oh, well, my opinion doesn't matter. Or, you know, in a meeting or whatever, they're looking to every man in the room and you're like, I got some shit to say over here. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I mean, confidence, I guess, would be the way to say it. But you confidence with with kindness. It's 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 a fine line, isn't it? Yeah. It, it because <sighs> it's like a, it's a confidence, but with like not with arrogance, not yeah. with cockiness. Yeah. Yeah. I just went through it. And, and sometimes you can settle, you know, like in a artful situation where you might be making a choice about what you're going to deliver mm -hmm. in a show or writing or whatever. And you have a gut feeling about it. But the gut feeling is a little more trouble, more mm. writing, more complicated, more. I don't know if that's the right sound on that guitar. I don't know if that was the right in the mix. I had that happen to me recently. And I knew it in my heart. Like I was like, the EQ on that is not right. I know it's not right. I said something about it, fixed it a little bit, listened again, and I said it was okay. And then I knew it wasn't. Really? You know, I knew. Yeah. And like, you're going to hear it and never think anything about it. But in my heart, I know what it should have been. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I don't like that about me i don't like that i just did that because i usually wouldn't do that mm -hmm. you know why so, do you think you did it in that situation because it was going to be too much trouble <laughs> and we, were under, <laughs> we were under a time crunch yeah. and like it, i mean it's it's beautiful it's just what if i was really like fully going all the way there i would have fixed something that right and it might have even been better. And I don't think there, art is subjective, so I don't think there's a right or wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. You're not going to hear it and go, you're not even going to know what I'm talking about. But in my mind, in the same way that I might listen to you guys tonight, I wish I could go, but Me too. it's sold out. Um, we'll just still get you. probably sneak you. Probably <laughs> catch you in there. Um, and you might, you know, know something that didn't quite fall. Oh, my Lord. But- I'm going to still just sit there and love every minute of it, you know, but in your mind, you're going to go, dang it. I knew I should have said it this way. He, I come we, up, I we were in Indianapolis come up, come and he was like, dude, I come off the stage. He goes, dude, great show. I was like, I hated that one. Yeah. He's like, what are you talking about? They loved it. I'm like, I felt off. I was like a beat off mm -hmm. on the first four jokes. And he's like, what? It sounded exactly the same, but I, not to me, I've, but I would say this also. I don't know if a song is like a joke, but honestly, if I didn't say, okay, this is done, I could tinker with it forever. Yeah. And you'd yeah. have to push away from the table at some point. Right. Because yeah. I could be like, mm, I could change this here. So at some point you just have to be like, this is yeah. what it's supposed to be. And yeah. imperfection is beautiful. Nobody wants to hear like something so glossed up and buttoned Can up. I that tell you. Also nothing, nothing, nothing is going to be perfect the first time uh -huh. we do it. when we dave Grohl hosted chelsea lately for a week okay amazing and he 
was so a, good at it. He, amazing. I remember oh watching that. But <sighs> such a gracious dude with his time. And he let us ask him questions for an hour a day at the end. And I was talking to him just about, he said something about recording in the studio. And he said, oh, we leave, you can hear me moving my hand up and down the guitar. Be I leave that in on purpose because I want you to know there's a human being doing that, right? Playing guitar. The noise, yeah. You, you hear me breathe. Right. He said, if you listen to some of these. Oh, it's clipped off and you're not You don't hear the breath. person hit yeah. this huge note and then breathe. Right. Like that's not no what No one human, breathes. That's not what humans do. Yeah. We, crazy. And so it's interesting because he was like, he was saying that, that the imperfection is the song. Mm hmm Right? It's it's what tells you this is the emotion. This is the grit. This yeah. is the what to, you know, when I listen to old Beatles albums, when I listen to McCartney sing, Oh Darling, mm. no auto tune. I know. No, you're no. gonna hear like a little bit of sharp flat because that's what but we it are. Was We're amazing. humans. Yeah. I'm I'm like sometimes I'll go like we could have just like hired a background singer if you don't want to hear my full throat. Like yeah. if you don't want to hear me, if you're if it's gonna get like so tweaked out, mm -hmm. perfect, in tune, then what what am I here for? Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, my delivery is like what I'm supposed to be doing. My storytelling, mm -hmm. your storytelling. That's what the, makes you you. It's a scary thing. It's the human because yeah. because our younger generation is so used to hearing perfection yeah especially in music yeah yeah like crystal clean perfection mm -hmm. i like the live i yeah. like if the song isn't exactly the same as it is in the studio because yo i can't hit that note live right i i you know what i mean i yeah, like it yeah. you're and, and it i'm watching humans right i don't want the tracking i don't i want yo i gotta tell you and then i know we gotta wrap up but i love going to see you guys live you're so together. The your all your voices fit so perfectly together. Your harmonies are like butter. But you are such a rock star on stage. You, I love watching you because you you command. Like everybody's just like when you do girl crush. I, Becky, what, Becky and I, we were at Mohegan Sun, and I was just watching them. And she was like, what are you staring at? I'm like, this is an amazing performer. Like, how you, yeah, dude, it was, the energy was crazy. The way you keep people focused right on you. It's a quiet confidence to walk. I don't understand how rock stars do that. Like, you, you, there's so, you almost have to turn into a different person mm -hmm. on stage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are you, do you have like a on stage, not persona, but like, you're like, I'm, this is, I'm different on stage. This is who I am on stage. I feel the most like at home as a human on stage. What did I just say to you last night? I feel more comfortable on stage than I do off. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You did say that last night. It's so weird. I, I do like, I, especially if I'm in the zone and I'm really thinking about like what I'm saying and singing and not worried about anything else. I feel like, wow, I'm the luckiest girl in the world that I get to that I was given a gift and I get to use it somehow to make someone out there feel good. Yeah. You know, I, by the way, Jimmy, Jimmy too, on stage, Jimmy oh. is, I'm, I his said, voice is crazy, crazy. But crazy. We, when we saw you in Reno, I'm like, Jimmy's hot. <laughs> <laughs> he is hot. I'm like, Jimmy's hot. Yeah. yeah. And, and he, the same thing on stage, he becomes this dude. Yeah. Who's, I'm just like, look at him strut that shit around. <laughs> it's amazing Relax to see. Relax over there. And I love <laughs> it, but I, but I, but it's, I was comment, you, does that dawn on you when you're on stage that these 10,000 people left their house to come see me? They're all singing my song and they all feel good. What a, how, what a crazy blessing that is that you get yeah. to provide that for people. Yeah, I mean it's a gift, and I, it's a gift to be there and do that. And I don't, I don't know that we're singing to ten thousand people anymore, but um, um, <laughs> come down to Zanies tonight. You can just <laughs> sing to three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I love it so much, and it is such a just joy, like to write a song in a room and take it all the way to the right production and have somebody champion the song and the right team to it 
becoming like someone's anthem for their life. Crazy. Is crazy. Mm -hmm. And that is so incredible. You know, that I'm so lucky that I get to hang out with, and I'm going to cheerlead the women in this town for a minute, but you know, the Lori McKenna's and the Hillary Lindsay's and the Liz Rose and Elisa Vanderheim's and Kelsey Ballerini's and Miranda Lambert's and Natalie Hemby's, all these writers that I've spent so much time with that just love to craft a song and a story, you know? I love that. That's amazing. It's, it's a real, it's a real gift that just the relationships in town. Do you know what's interesting is what's important to you? If something's important to somebody, I'll watch you talk about it all day long. Yeah. Your, a pa- your passion right. or your truth, whatever it is, is so interesting to me. Mm-hmm. So th- th- this entire conversation, and you grew up so differently than I did. Yeah. Right? I know. Yeah. We did. Me and too. yet we have so much in common. Yeah. I mean, I grew up, you know, with people with horns. I'm a Jew. Uh, no, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No horns anymore, guys. We shave them off when we're born. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> is that the same so surgery? Much. Is right. that the same surgery as the circumcision? Are they do the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> get rid of the horns and the tip at the yeah, same They get rid of all they get rid of all three horns, man. I'm just curious. Is that what happens? Like a one, two. Uh, <laughs> um <laughs> all right, everybody. 70% better. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they we love you. Karen, thank you so much for coming to I love do y'all. this. And I love, I love watching this. Thank you. Like, thank you. The this, joy. This and was great. This was this awesome. Is, I'm telling you, my you. absolute favorite part I wish of I could. Ride. Maybe I can sneak out of the house tonight. Come through. Yeah, come see just us. Just text me if you want to come. What time yeah. are the shows? 7 and 9.15. Sold out. Yeah. Just oh, y'all through. have been here all week. Yeah. yeah. Killing it. Yeah. It's been a whole bunch of fun. Come. It, look, last night you didn't want to come. I did mushrooms last night. Last night was nuts. Tonight, I'm normal. You're not? No, uh, normal Josh. Well, I mean, well, there's normal no normal is. Josh. I mean, um, we don't know what's going to happen not with, with normal that Josh. <laughs> no. not with Better that. than your average Josh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, when I put that jacket on, I'm not normal Josh. <laughs> there is I no normal wait. Josh, period. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Wolf is not a normal human being. I don't know if y'all know that, but no. everybody, we love you. Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Love thank y'all. you. This was amazing. I love you. I love you too. And we love you guys. None of it's possible without y'all. And we really appreciate you for sticking around. And as always, do something nice for someone today. Tell somebody you love them. Love we'll see you, you next week. Later. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.